What are you looking at? Oh, me! That's right, because you clicked on a link. Thanks! Anyways, guys, uh, today, Wednesday the 18th, we're going to be talking about a few things. Number one being RIM and their playbook and what happened there. Their stocks plummeted. Uh, that's a big mistake on their part. Um, first, though, we're going to start with Robert Herjavec. I just want to briefly talk about it. A couple weeks ago, I actually went to a conference hosted by the Toronto Entrepreneurs Group. Uh, it was really cool. featured Robert Herjavec giving a motivational talk about how he made his success and how what, what his views on wealth are. And, uh, that was really cool. Someone just logged into Skype. That's why you heard that. Anyways, uh, i probably close that for next time. So, yeah, that was really interesting to see uh, Robert's views and hear his story. It was really cool. It wasn't very informative. It was more motivational. You've met me the best day of your life, other than when you got married. I'm a dream come true for you. You're obviously also humble. Exactly. That's why they call me Mr. Wonderful. Who exactly is calling you Mr. Wonderful? <laughs> you are, right? Now. I don't need no mirror on the wall. This is the best news you've heard today. I'm going to buy the whole company. I'm going to fire you. Yes, and you're taking all the patents into consideration. Everything. Everything comes home to daddy. None of you know the industry. But I know how to make money. Cool segue, eh? <laughs> He's Mr. Wonderful. I wish I, one day I'm going to have a theme song. Check it out. Anyways, uh... Yeah, so Kevin O'Leary, I went and saw him Monday night, uh, last Monday at the Center in the Square in Kitchener. It was absolutely amazing. I was uh, the very first row, row AA, seat two. I was about five feet away from Mr. Wonderful himself, or the Merchant of Truth, whatever you want to call him. Uh, and the show, Dragon's Den and Shark's Tank, uh, he really is portrayed as being a jackass and uh, arrogant. In fact, he's very down-to-earth and a very, very nice and polite man. Uh, it was really interesting. I got to ask him a couple questions about investing. I also asked him what his views on the bailout of the car of the car industries were. Um, that was really interesting to hear his viewpoints. He's a very intelligent person. He really simplified investing. Uh, myself, knowing nothing about investing, all, I've always wanted to learn, but I've just never taken the time to uh, dive into it. He simplified all of the you know different uh, theories about investing, mutual funds, and savings. Uh, he challenged everyone in the audience, especially where I was sitting, it was the student seats. So he challenged us uh, for every paycheck that we get this summer. He wants us to save one third of it and put, in it, put it into a um, bank account, buy some mutual funds with it or something like that, just so it can sit and mature. So I promised Uncle Kevin that I would, and I'm doing it actually. I'm buying my first mutual funds today, so it's pretty cool. Uh, going with ING seemed to be the best. Regardless of that though, Kevin's uh, investing all is based off the uh, 5 and 20 rule. He says that you never invest more than 5% of your total net worth into any one stock and never more than 20% of your entire net worth into any one sector. Makes sense if you think about it. Now, I'm not really that knowledgeable on investing, so I'm going to leave that alone. I'm just going to talk about how he breaks his investing down. Kevin says that he will never buy a stock that does not offer a dividend which to me makes sense. Kevin loves Apple computers, but unfortunately, the Apple stock does not give dividends. So what does Kevin do? He goes to the person that makes, I'm looking for my iPod, I don't even have one here. Anyways, he's, he goes to the people that makes the processor and the screen and the cable charger and everything like that, all the little small little parts of a computer or an iPhone or something to do with Apple, and he invests in those companies because they're guaranteed companies if Apple is using them and they pay dividends. It's just like he was telling a story about investing in air conditioners. Instead of the actual company that makes the air conditioners, he goes to the company that, that distributes the hydro and makes the hydro. That's pretty smart. And I never thought of investing like that, breaking it down to the simplest form. We're going to take a minute and talk about RIM and the playbook. RIM just recalled over 1,000 playbooks. That's huge. And they said it was due to an operating system failure. Now, in the meantime, RIM has already been replacing those playbooks. And uh, they listed all the serial numbers on crackberry.com. And they've uh, the, the, the issue's fixed, but still, their stocks were severely hurt. Almost uh, plummeted by 50%. That's a two-year low for RIM. And, uh, just to put it in perspective, since February, because of all the issues they've been having with the playbook and all the bad media that they've been having, uh, their stock has decreased a total of 24%. Um, back when RIM was in their prime before they started having any problems, they were trading their stocks around $150. Right now you can buy a RIM stock for around $51. That's, uh, that's huge. So right now if it was me, I would invest in RIM. Buy, buy, buy. Why? You know RIM's going to get back up. They're a Canadian company. The Canadian government will not allow them to be taken over by an American corporation. Uh, it's a great time. Stocks are low. They're going to go back up. They're the only supplier distributor of blackberries. 
Uh, they have the tablet. Once that gets fixed, they'll always release a version 2. Stocks will get back up to the 100 plus, probably even 150 around that area. They, they'll get back. It might take a little bit of time. Uh, so my advice, not that it's worth anything, but if it was me, I would invest money in BlackBerry and in RIM right now. So guys, that's all I'm going to talk about. Uh, some people wanted me to talk about the Sony issue and their the, their servers being hacked and all the credit card information being uh taken and that their network was down. Actually, their network was just put back up the other day. Um, so I'm not going to talk about that. The issue's kind of resolved itself now. Uh, I know Sony worked around the clock. I saw that, I watched the video from their CEO um, talking about the issues that they had and what they did to fix it. So everything's fine there, and I'm sure we've all heard about it enough on the news. Um, yeah, so that's all. There's uh, a couple cool things happening with Barnes & Nobles and AT&T. Um, we'll talk about that in the next video. They're not even being implemented for a couple of more weeks, so I'll talk about it next week. It'll be really interesting to see what AT&T and Barnes and & Noble is doing. Um, they're kind of, uh, they're completely separate. They're not doing things together, but uh, both of them are pretty big for each company. So I'll tell you guys about that next week. Anyways, I hope you guys have a good week, and uh, see you soon. Try to wink. Uh.